Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Patricia. How are you? Uh, a little tired, but uh, happy. Happy to be there. To be, to be here. Good evening. <laughs> Excellent. Good evening, Susana. How are you today? I'm fine, and you? Very good, actually. Doing better than yesterday. <laughs> Much better than yesterday. Thanks, God. Just waiting here for the class. It's raining, so I mean, we should be sleeping. <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and work it together. Okay. <laughs> teacher, congratulations. Tomorrow is the teacher's day. <laughs> Tomorrow is teacher's day, exactly. <laughs> Oof, I be I've been a teacher for let me see since 2000, 2000 since 2011 oh. since I was 20 wow. 22 <clears throat> that's a long time yeah so congrats you, teacher thank you it's a difficult it's a difficult career yeah, I think so. Mostly because in El Salvador, I mean, you don't get paid. Well, I think in most of the countries in Latin America, you don't get paid what you're supposed to <laughs> for being a teacher. Right? Like in other countries. <laughs> like in other countries, exactly. In other yeah. countries, right? Being a teacher is, is something important for the, for the government. Here. Yeah, for example, if you go to the United States, um, in this country, uh, the government paid very well to mm, some in some places. Or it, it depends um, to the subject that you. Uh, yeah, the thing it. is that the thing is that we see that there is a lot of money, but in reality because of the expenses that they have. I mean, life in the United States is more expensive than life in, the, yeah, in El Salvador. Right. So mm -hmm. I have had, uh, you know, co-workers from universities, uh, from University of Maryland, University of New Mexico. Uh, really? Right, yeah, other professors that they were my co-workers before. And then they said they that- They don't earn. No, they don't. I mean, Enough. the majority of money that they get is just uh, for books that they publish, right? Yeah. Or things like that. For example, in my case, I have published two books here in El Salvador. But really? yes, but nobody reads them. <laughs> <laughs> One about English language learning Tell us in about El Salvador. the name of the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, we just printed some for the for the universities in El Salvador, right? So students can read them, but people don't buy books here, right? But one of them is about environment, right? Environment is a, like um, a strategies to improve the environment in El Salvador in universities. And the other one is for English language learning in El Salvador, how to make this learning process better for students. But yeah, here in El Salvador, they don't buy. Nowadays, uh, I think it's um, a problem that people uh, don't like to read. Don't like reading. Uh -uh. Don't like reading. They prefer um, a read, but in, in the cell phone or computer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or just social media. Mm -hmm. Social media. Uh -huh. Wattpad. 
what but i think that's <laughs> okay so yeah so it's a difficult but tomorrow is our day tomorrow is teacher's day <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow is teacher's day have you have plans for tomorrow no not really not really <laughs> now okay. i work i work uh, uh online right so it's pretty much everything online so i don't i don't celebrate right but in the past i used to celebrate a lot <laughs> Okay, well, let's go ahead and check here. I have some uh, things for noun phrases, right, that we need to work with, right? Noun phrases are, um, actually, they are very good to, to practice, right? Noun phrases within relative clauses, right? And they work as a subject, right? As a subject and as an object. They sound difficult, but they are not. I have some examples for you, right? And then we're going to watch here. Uh, we're gonna watch the video, then we're gonna see the examples and we're going to keep on working, okay? We have two videos actually, because the one that we have here is like one minute, right? One minute and a half. And the other one I have, it's another two minutes. Okay, so we're gonna work with both of them. So let me show you here my computer. We're gonna watch them back to back, okay? Can you see the, the video? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yes, teacher. Yes. Let, let us take notes, okay? And so we can make our examples. Now, let's listen. Can you listen to this? And then we're gonna have... Yes, okay. Yes. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends. By the end of this class you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. And then we'll move into the object, probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be is. And then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've I've colored that in green, so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a what's a uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses. 
all right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make sense of it but we're gonna try to uh, make different synthesis with them all right so um, I mentioned one thing um, you could you could express this idea by saying something right uh, you could also say two people or you can say two things or you can say uh, two things that I miss would be and then you mention what those things are um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking so I've included uh, a few relative classes and let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question so what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country what would you be anxious about what would you be comfortable with what would you be curious about what would you be enthusiastic about what would you be fascinated by um, let's say that we choose the country uh, maybe France all right so France seems like a very touristic place and I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country so let's do that second one one thing I'd be nervous about is Right, that's going to follow the bird to be and maybe for me is getting lost all right uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about then this is followed by the bird to be and then this will be followed by the object of the sentence okay so for me one thing I really be nervous about or one thing I'll be nervous about is getting lost one thing I'll be anxious about is getting to know this new city one thing I'll be comfortable with is the weather one thing I'll be curious about is learning about the country's culture one thing I'll be enthusiastic about is learning the new language one thing I'll be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city and so you get the idea um, so if we follow this pattern subject plus relative clause plus birth to be plus the object then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural Okay. I will need to change the verb to be and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural they need to match with whatever the subject is so for example two things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room at home okay that's just to give you an example and if the subject changes to something plural then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest so what are this Okay, we just watched that video was uh, very self-explanatory. I want to leave it like that. We're going to watch another one. Okay, can you see here? Uh, yeah, like this. Can you see the video where it says now phrases containing relative clauses? Yes, yes. Did you? Okay, let's do okay. This lesson discusses noun phrases that contain relative clauses. For example, something that I'd love is tasting different types of food. Something that I'd love is the noun phrase. The noun is something and I'd love is the relative clause. In this example, a noun phrase comes before the verb to be, or is, and therefore is the subject. This sentence can be rearranged so that the noun phrase comes after the verb to be, and therefore is the object. Tasting different types of foods is something that I'd love. Notice. The noun phrase, something that I love, comes after the verb to be. Both sentences have the same meaning. Here, 
One thing that I'd be embarrassed about is speaking another language. Has the same meaning as speaking another language is one thing that I'd be embarrassed about. In this case, the noun phrase is the subject. Over here, the noun phrase comes after the verb to be and therefore is the object. In this example, someone who I'd miss is my best friend. My best friend is someone who I'd miss. Again, these have the same meaning, but in this case, it is the subject, whereas over here, the noun phrase is the object. Think and talk about things you would miss about living in another country to practice noun phrases with relative clauses. Okay, so there we are. We have a, the noun phrases containing relative clauses, right? And we can see here our structure. Subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus object, right? That's pretty much what we need. That's pretty much what we want, right? So let me go ahead and just do something here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will need we need subject plus from it plus subject mm -hmm. plus relative class. Okay, now let me show you here my computer again. Right. Hello. Teacher, your screen is dark. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. Yes. Uh -huh. Let me show you. I don't know why nowadays the screen is showing black. It's something that my computer is doing. Right which is very terrible. So we have the subject, right? This is the structure that we want. We have the subject, right? We have the relative clause. We have a lot of examples there in the video, right, for relative clauses. We have the verb be, and we have our complement, right? That's what we're looking for. So. Examples that they are showing us there for relative clauses, they are given already. That's good, right? Then we know that that is between parentheses because it's optional, right? It's not necessary all the time, it's optional. So you can use it if you want to or not, right? Now, this I, right, I would, right? I would be fascinated about, for example, Fascinated about. Or fascinated, yeah, fascinated by, right? We have our subject, one thing, right? And our verb to be, right? So we have different examples there. Uh, I will really miss, let me put some. That I really miss. Okay, let's write two more. I'll be comfortable with. And also, I'll, I'll be curious about, I like curious. Now, if I use only one thing, then my verb be is going to be singular. We know that we call that subject verb agreement, right? Now, my, my situation here is going to be, um, let's see. 
let's say my situation is going to going to Europe. That's our situation, going to Europe. So for going to Europe, right? What could be the examples that you can uh, write? I wanna write one. One thing that I'd be fascinated by is the culture. I'm pretty sure, right? The culture. I have my example. I have my sentence there, right? That I can write with no problems at all. Let's see, one thing that, I, that I'd that be fascinated by is spending time with my family. Okay, very good, Patricia. That I, look at this, I would. This I is I would, okay? But we're just contracting it. There, we're making it shorter, right? I'd be fascinated by. Now, let's let's say all of you are going to Europe, right? You're going to go to Europe on a trip. What sentences can you write just in this structure? Uh -huh. One thing that I'd be anxious about, uh, in this case, uh, Cody, anxious about is to speak a different language. Okay, anxious about. Anxious about mm -hmm. is to speak a different language. Very good, Cory. Azucena, Gracina, Elizabeth, Mayra, your examples. Let's see here. One thing that I've been nervous about is, is speaking in public, speaking, speaking in public, very good. Uh -huh. Exactly. One, one thing that I'd be, I'd be fascinated by is shopping clothes. <laughs> I think me too. <laughs> me too, Gracina. Okay. Just the other phrases. Comfortable with. Uh, two things in Europe, I'm going to Europe. Two things I'd be comfortable with are the food and um, the food in some place also could be. What? Places. And the places, okay? And the wow. places. Very good, right? Thank you, Juan. Two things I'd be comfortable with are So one thing that I'd be curious about is reading a new book. I really miss is living without a mask. One thing. Okay, but you're going to Europe. You are going to Europe. That's the situation. You are going to Europe. Mm -hmm. Is making no friends, very good. Comfortable, comfortable. Look at the spelling of Susana, it's comfortable. Uh, 
are reading a book on the train and visiting castles. Cody are reading a book and visiting castles. Okay, now I'm gonna show you other examples here, right? Can you see my computer right now? Yes, teacher. Okay. The things that I'd be comfortable with are reading a book on train and visiting. To visiting now, Cody, and visiting. Okay. Now we have now phrases. We have more examples here, right? Someone wrote this example in the chat before. One thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking, right? Something that I've been nervous about is speaking French. The person who I call every day is my girlfriend, right? Now I want you to look at thing here, right? For this, right? Look at the question, right? Patricia, can you please read right here the situation? If you went. If you went to live in a foreign country, um, uh, what, what would you? What would you be curious about? One thing, their customs. Okay. Their customs, one. Example, their, their custom, customs is one thing I'd be curious about. One thing I'd be curious about is their customs. Okay, very good. Now, if you went to live in a foreign country, I want you to answer this with your example. This is the example from the, from the PowerPoint, right? I want you to write your example. If you went to live in a foreign country, what would you be curious about? If you were to live, not to visit, to live in a foreign country, any country, what would you be curious about? Uh -huh. Their food is one thing I'd be curious about. Okay, that would be the relative clause as an object. Patricia, very good, right? She said their food. What about the, the others? Only Patricia. Hmm. How do you say paisaje? View? View. 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 Okay. One thing I need to be curious about is uh, watching the architecture. Is watching the architecture, very good. Excellent. One thing I'd be curious about is visiting new church. This, visiting a new church, very good. Is there security, very good. Is there food, Patricia, very good. I would be looking at the foot, <laughs> right? Now, that's one question. Next question, right? What, who would you think about all day? Here, we were thinking about our girlfriend. And my girlfriend is the person who I would think about all day for my boyfriend, my husband, right? If I went to live in a, in a foreign country, right? Who would you think about all day? Mm 
My sister is the person who I think about all day. While well, think about all day, very good, Corey. That's a great answer. And the others? My daughter is the person who I think about all day. Okay, your daughter. Thank you, Mayra. My very little son is the person who I think about all day. Okay. Imagine you live in another country, Mayra and Davis. And your kids the right person here who I think about all day is my grandma. Okay. Okay, very good. It's my grandma. Excellent. My mom is the person who I think about all day. What we think about all day. Okay, very good. Now, what would you feel homesick? What would you, what would make you feel homesick? What would make you feel homesick? Do you know what homesick is? I don't know. Homesick is, for example, have you noticed people when they go to the United States and they are there and they are just listening to cumbia and eating pupusas all the time. Right. They miss, they miss because one thing homesick about is their that they, country. Yes, they miss everything about the country. Mm -hmm. What would you make you feel homesick? I think what would make me feel homesick for me, right? Uh, would be something that would make me feel sentirse in casa. It's not feeling at home. It's the opposite. The opposite, Elizabeth. Something, Something that would make me feel homesick is... Uh, ah, I forgot. <laughs> is missing my friends. Missing your friends, very good. Right. Something that are, that would make me feel homesick is missing my mother. Very good. My would be is not sharing my food with, with my husband. That would be one. Right. Not sharing my meals with my husband. Mm -hmm. That would make me feel homesick. Very good. Now homesick let's see. That who make me feel homesick is uh, the food, the Salvadorian food. The Salvadoran food, okay, perfect. Salvadoran food, excellent. What would you, what would you feel uncomfortable with? Uncomfortable with? If you went to live in a foreign country, Something we are all living. I will be uncomfortable with is speaking other language. <laughs> <laughs> speaking another language. Okay, perfect. Perfect, Miss Guti. And the others? Um, something I will be uncomfortable with is, is not. Uh, <laughs> I think that the verb, I don't know, because <laughs> I want to say understand to other people, to other person. Bill? But the verb understanding is, doesn't exist. And, and I don't know if, if it's correct to say. What do you want to say? I want to say that when I speak with other people, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm afra afraid that I will not understand that they say that they... It's not, uh, okay. say, it's not getting what they are saying. Not getting, again. get. It's not getting what they, when other people say. Or said? Say. Say, okay. Okay. And who would you call first? One person I will call first is my grandmother. 
My sister is one person I call mm -hmm. first. Okay. My husband is one person I call first. Me too. That will be my second person. <laughs> okay. My Very grandfather good. is one person I call him first. With my my daughter and my boyfriend traveling with me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> And the others? That is. My mother is one person I call first. First, okay. Now, the last one. That was yeah. the last one. Yeah, that was the last one. Right. So we finished there, right? With this exercise with noun phrases. Do you understand now phrases? Do you see the purpose of these phrases here? And why we're looking at them? I hope so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I suppose to. Now, if we look at it. Maybe I will not know what I'm saying, but <laughs> no. I think <laughs> you will you will get it, okay? Now, look at this. Here, as a subject and as an object, we already know, right? We already made some changes, but it was using them as an, as an object, relative clauses as an object, right? Where we actually put the relative clause after the verb to be, like we watch in this video, right? In the second video that we watch, that we just change the position, right? We're gonna watch it here just because we have to, but then we move forward with another topic, okay? Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. In our previous class, we learned how to express these ideas. And what we focused on learning was how to express the, uh, these ideas and using the noun phrases as the subject of our sentence. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the right side of this chart and we're going to learn how to use the noun phrases as the object of our sentence. So if you recall our previous lesson we learned one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. And we learned this sort of formula here subject plus relative clause plus the verb to be and then the object uh, that that's the activity what we're gonna do in this lesson is we're gonna borrow this object and we're gonna turn that into the subject of our sentence um, so I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep one of those ideas there so you can see exactly what happens whenever we make that particular change what we want to do is we want to change this statement one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking into my mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. By the way, it's important to mention, and I think I did not mention this in our previous lesson, that what you see in parentheses is optional. That means that you can either use it or you know, exclude it from your sentence. So one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking, that's correct. But also if you just say one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, either one of those two sentences is correct. Let me write this structure down so you can see what's going to happen whenever we make this change. As I mentioned previously, what we want to do is we want to change this noun phrase that is being used as the subject. That means that the noun phrase, one thing I really miss, is the subject of our sentence. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to change that into being the object of our sentence, as you can see here in our next example. So um, the structure is the following. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a, we're going to change my mom's cooking into that being the subject of our sentence. All right. So let me go ahead and write that down. I'm going to say my my mom's cooking. That's becomes the subject of our sentence now. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is. I'm, I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, this is quite clear, so I'm going to uh, put in those spaces there. So I'm also going to go ahead and change that color to make sure that we um, 
see what's happening, right? So that's in green. The subject is in green. So I'm, I'm changing my mom's cooking, which was the object of our previous sentence, to that being the subject of our sentence now. Now, notice that the verb to be also changes in location, and the verb to be follows the subject. So my mom's cooking. All right, and that's the verb to be is. Let me change the color there as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, then this follows the noun phrase, all right? So what do I mean by the noun phrase? Uh, well, uh, uh, previously it was the subject of her sentence, and also that would follow the relative clause. So literally, this is what I'm going to put here. I separated it so that you could see actually what happened there, all right? Uh, but the, the noun, uh, and I, I think I colored that differently, so let me make sure everything matches here. All right, um, and that's basically what happened. Just a couple of things changed. Number one, we had to change the object of our previous sentence to that being the subject of our new sentence. So my mom's cooking. Uh, and then that followed the verb to be. So the verb to be follows the subject. My mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. If we look at our previous examples, the ones that we did in our previous lesson, uh, in which we said one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. So let's say that I wanted to change this idea and I wanted to use this uh, noun phrase, but now being used as the object, all right? Um, and, and so let me write that idea down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this uh, this activity getting lost, which in our previous sentence was the object of our sentence, and we're going to change it to the subject. So for example, we'll say getting lost, all right? That's, that's, uh, that becomes the subject of our sentence, okay? That follows the verb to be, is, and then um, that will follow uh, the noun phrase, all right? So we're going to say is uh, one thing, okay? And then that follows the relative class. I'll be um, nervous about, all right? Uh, very important. I want you to notice what happens with this preposition. This preposition uh, will typically go at the very end, as you can see. So I want to emphasize this real quick. Um, and what I would like for you to do is to use uh, the same ideas that you wrote down in the previous class, but change the order of them. The goal is to practice. As you can see, um, we, we have the same ideas here on the example. Something I'd be nervous about is making new friends. What we do is we change the order of this and we say making new friends is something I'd be nervous about or making new friends is something that I would be nervous about. Okay. So if you notice, right, we just exchange the position and then the subject now is the object. Right, that's pretty easy, I think, right? Like I said, some of you were already using that structure already, right? but I would like to know if you have questions about this specific structure. Now phrases. Mm -hmm. Nope, yes, maybe. Uh -huh. Teacher, yes. Uh, tell you two example, please. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. And is is I think it's almost the same that that the other structure. Yes, it's almost the same. Like we said, we just exchange the the positions. Uh -huh. Yes, is. Is very easy to 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 get confused. I think. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Well, mm -hmm. Okay. So, what could be your examples for uh, Cody? Mm -hmm. 
What are your examples? My examples. Uh -huh. You said you had two examples. No. Tell, tell you, no, tell us two examples, please. <laughs> oh, okay. <Thank> you. <laughs> we have the examples here, right? <laughs> we have the examples here, eh, Cody, right? Excuse me, teacher, it was raining here and I couldn't connect. Oh, but you're here, Veronica. Thank you so much for being here. Look at this, right? We have the examples right here in all of the in all of the sentences, right? Since we start here, right? This is right when we say the person um. who I think about all day is my girlfriend. The second sentence here is the the other way. This is subject, right? That. This is subject. This is object. Sub subject an object, right? When object. we exchange the position, then we have the sentences like uh, they tell us that in the example, we have not knowing anybody is something that would make me, that would make me feel homesick. Yeah. In this case, the first one is the object because it's after the verb to be, after, right? Yes. And this one, something that will make me feel homesick is not knowing anybody. If you look at this, the only thing that we're doing for is this. It's the position of the subject. Exactly. Uh... We're just exchanging here, right? The position of this, right? That's it, right? We're just exchanging the, the, the position. Right, if the relative clause here is after the verb to be, then it, it is an object. If it is before, then it's the subject. Okay, teacher. Okay, perfect, that's a good question. <laughs> Let's see. One thing I'd be comfortable with is turning on the air conditioning. Okay, the air conditioning. Turning the air conditioning is one thing I'd be comfortable with. Very good, Patricia. Comfortable. Yes, air conditioning. Air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Very good. Patricia already wrote her examples, right? We have more examples right here. Of course, by right? talking to strangers, something I will be comfortable with, object. Something I will be comfortable with is talking to strangers, subject, right? I still feel confused. What is subject and an object? A subject is the beginning of the sentence that comes before the verb. An object is what comes after the verb. Simple as that. Uh -huh. My subject term is um, one, thing is um, be really nice is sleeping with my grandma and the uh, subject of some is no uh, repeat again what is your my, subject example my, no my object exam is uh, one thing no is Really means because that is the that is the the relative clause, Elizabeth. So that would be your subject example. No, uh, one thing uh, is my object example. No, my subject. No. 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 Okay. In this case here. Look at this. We have two examples, right? Let's go back here. Look at this. Oops, 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 oops. what happened? Look at that. When we have this, as a subject, we start with one thing. As a subject, one thing that I will really miss is my mom's cooking. That is as a subject. What is the subject? One thing that I will really miss. 
That's the subject. As an object, we have my mom's cooking is one thing that I will really miss. It is this part that I'm selecting, that I'm highlighting with red, that will be the object. Why? Because it's after our verb. What is the verb here in this case? It's the verb to be, right? It's the verb to be. So in that case, right, if it's after the verb, then this is the object. Here we say as an object. So what is your subject example, Elizabeth? Mm, my subject exam is um, someone I, quiero ver. Mm, no, one thing I really miss is and um, sleep it with my grandma. Okay, very good. That's your subject example. Now, what could be the object example? Okay. Um, is sleeping with my grandma is um, it really means one thing. It's one thing I will really miss. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. It's one thing I will really miss. Very good, Elizabeth. Excellent job. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's see the others. Azucena, Mayra, Diana, Juan Carlos. What are your examples? Cori, Rosa, Gracina, Veronica? Yes, I put in on the chat. I think it's, uh, it's oh. object example. Speaking in public is one thing I, I would be comfortable with. Very good. Speaking in public is one thing I'd be comfortable with. That's excellent. That will be your object example. Object, yes. Uh -huh. One thing I'd be fascinated by is attending a birth. Attending a birth is one thing I'd be fascinated by. Excellent. That's one thing I would really miss. Excellent, Patricia. Your examples are on point. Right. Very good. What about learning you? new thing? Uh -huh. uh, is something that I will uh, comfortable with. Okay. Learning new is an things? object example. Okay. Repeat again. Learning new things. Learning new things uh, is something uh -huh. that I will. Uh, be comfort, comfortable or comfortable. comfortable? I don't know how to pronounce. Comfortable? Comfortable uh, with. With. Very good. Excellent job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. The others? I, I would like to know your examples, please. Gracina says, one thing I've been comfortable with is high air conditioning. Conditioning, ING. One thing that I would miss is playing with my daughter. That's Mayra and Gracina, those are a subject. Now write them as objects. As objects. What could be as objects? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing I'd be fascinated, I, I would be, I'd be fascinated by is eating my favorite food. I'd be, Rosaluz. Okay, now, do you understand the difference between subject and object? Play with my daughter is one thing I really, really miss. Very good, Mayra. I'll be comfortable the, the object is before, uh, if a uh, is after the verb. 
B. Yes. Uh -huh. And the subject is before the verb B. Exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Juan Carlos, in your case, we have a subject, subject that is plural. Two things I'd be comfortable with are traveling and knowing new places. Traveling and no, are traveling and knowing new places. Dancing under oh, okay. the rain. <laughs> Dancing under the rain is one thing I would miss. Excellent, Patricia. Right now, you can go dance under under the rain. <laughs> it's rain. <laughs> no, don't go out. You're gonna get flu or something. Okay, perfect, guys. So we have these examples today, right? I would like to uh, ask if you have any questions uh, besides this. Tomorrow we are going to keep on working. As I can see here, we have the knowledge check for that. We also have our last topic, which is expectations. Right? We're going to work with that and we're gonna do also some readings, right? To complete the week and also the, the final exam that we're gonna do on Friday, right? But I would like to know if you have any questions so far that I can help you with. Something that maybe is not clear. No? No, teacher. No. Teacher, in, yes. the, in the platform, can you explain one sentence, please? In the fi final exam, in the part B, mm -hmm. and I have a doubt. Okay. That will be by tomorrow then, right? Part B, the last in the final I exam. Think, I think it's part B, but if Part we, B request. Yes. The last one. <laughs> but you said, I yeah, just said that, that you didn't have a questions about that yes, one. but <laughs> I tried and I, and I done mm -hmm. this, this part, but I don't know why is the, the verb in, in, in progressive form. It's not progressive. It's not progressive. Is it, it's, it's not verb. It's, so is It's a general phrase. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> the progressiveness goes with the verb be. Wondering. The, ver uh -huh. Uh -huh. the progressiveness yeah. goes with the verb to be plus the verb with ing. But if you only have the verb in ing, right, then is a gerund phrase it's or not. a gerund. Mm -hmm. Can you can you spell this word? I think it's it's a it's a noun for me. Which is unknown? Gerund. Yes. Gerund. G e r u n d. A gerund. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Teacher. You're welcome, Cody. Right, you're welcome. Right. So yeah, it's not progressive, it's a general phrase. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. Let's see. Is sleeping in my workplace is one thing that I would love. <laughs> Imagine me sleeping right now here. Right, snoring. No, that would be crazy. My husband gives me money every week. Good for you, Veronica. Good for you. <laughs> but, right, one thing I would love is that my husband gets me more money every week. That's what you can write. Right? One thing, use the structure, right? Use the structure. Okay, guys. So we're gonna stop right here, right? We're gonna keep on working and I will see you uh, tomorrow, right? With the activities that we have pending and have a beautiful night, right? Rest and see you tomorrow at eight, okay? 
Okay, teacher. Thank you. Very good. Good night. Good night. Good morning. 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 Good